Now let's talk about one of the major piping systems, and that's polyethylene. It's also known as poly, and there's several different versions of it that we can deal with. We have a smaller kind, and this is a, a small piece of half-inch tubing. This is also called swing pipe or funny pipe or some of the brand names of it, but it's basically just a half-inch flexible tubing, and for this kind, we use this to run from the PVC pipe. We'll switch over here and convert to a um, three-quarter inch threaded elbow, and then we go out to a head location. And generally, the way we do now with accepted practices is we try to run the PVC up to within about maybe two feet of the ultimate head location, and then we switch over to this flexible polyethylene so that it has some um, ability to be moved around from where it is. Now, the old way would be to put a, a threaded nipple right here and then thread the head right down on top of the fitting, and then you position the pipe up or down in the ground and propped it up to get the top of the head where you wanted it. With this, it's a lot easier that you have the, flexibil uh, the flexibility to go left or right or even up and down because sometimes, you know, we know when we install a system, the final grade of the ground isn't always where we'd prefer it to be. Maybe the ground has already been graded by a bucket. We put the irrigation system in and then they come and put some thick sod on top of it that has a very thick backing. You may need to come and raise these up a little bit and this polyethylene tubing gives you the chance to deal with that. Now this is a short piece. I generally like two or maybe even three feet of tubing between the PVC pipe and my head, just so that I have that flexibility, and if it needs to be bent or adjusted, you have the ability to do so. The other type of tubing that you'll encounter is the larger sizes, three-quarter, one-inch, on up, and this is a major delivery system that's usually used in places that has softer soil. Here in my area, the upstate of South Carolina, the ground is a little too tough, it's pure clay with quartzite and limestone in there. So we don't really use this a lot. Um, we generally use just PVC pipe because it can be used in an open trench or the trenchless method. And what the trenchless method is, is a vibratory plow that's pulled behind a piece of equipment that vibrates as it's going into the ground and it only cuts a thin slit down into the ground and it pulls this polyethylene pipe into the ground with it. Uh, it's used up north in a lot of situations just simply because it has the ability to expand and contract more than PVC does. Basically, if there's any expansion or contraction of the ground with PVC, and especially if there's any water in the pipe, it's going to split or crack, but we use this in situations to where we need a little bit more expandability. Now, in the northern states, at the end of the season, they use compressed air to blow all the water out of the pipes, but even still, with a hard frost that goes all the way down to maybe even three feet down in the ground, you'll definitely want your irrigation system constructed of the material that's best going to withstand those conditions, and polyethylene is that material. When you see a friction loss chart, you're only going to find one for polyethylene, and that's because it is inner diameter controlled. The outside diameter may vary, and it does vary. I've got two different pieces here, <clears throat> and I got these as repair sticks in two foot sections. This here is rated at 100 PSI, but I've got some that has a thicker wall that's rated to 160 PSI, but the flow rate through these different pipes is going to be the same because it's inner diameter controlled. The outside thicknesses doesn't matter so much because we're going to be using clamps or nothing at all to secure the pipe. Now, the fittings that we use here are called friction barbs, and they have little sharp edges on them, not sharp enough to cut your fingers, but sharp enough to grab hold of the inside of the polyethylene pipe and keep it from pulling out. Now, if you use these type of friction barb fittings without a clamp on the outside, they're good up to 80 PSI. So if you're installing a irrigation system that has more than 80 PSI available to it, you're going to want to either use the clamps that hold this in place or you're going to want to use a pressure reducing valve on the system to bring the overall pressure down. 
I recommend that you do that anyway, but if you're constructing an entire system through polyethylene, you're going to want to use the clamps on it. Let's talk about how this is put together. Now when we deal with half inch, we have these little small barbs. This is a coupling and I also have a, a straight three quarter inch thread to barb type of fitting. As we saw on the fitting that went into the head, it was in a, um, a 90 degree bend, but this one's used if you just need to go straight ahead. If you're coming from below to a head location, this one will help you out. But basically with these, they're pretty much easy enough to fit in with your hand and you can take and force these things back and forth until it gets seated in and make sure that you cover up all of the little gills on this so that it'll have enough uh, of these to hold it in case it gets wiggled back and forth. Now, remember as you're putting these things in here and um, that they're just plastic because sometimes I tend to be a little rough with them. And if you're working a piece back and forth to get the polyethylene on there, be careful that you don't hear a little pop because these plastic fittings can snap. And sometimes because it's black, you don't even see the crack until you get the water on and then you get a gushing leak coming out of it. So be careful with that. But for the half inch, you won't be using any clamps on this and you definitely shouldn't have 80 over 80 PSI on these fittings, especially if you're going out to a head location. If you're ending up at 80 PSI at the head, then you need to do something about that pressure because it's probably over 100 at the beginning of the system. So we won't be using clamps on the half inch, but we will be using it on the larger ones. So these larger fittings <clears throat> are a little bit tougher to get into here. And now what I would recommend that if you're working with this for the day or you're installing a system, when you get to the job site, leave your pipe sitting out in the sun so that it'll warm up a little bit. It's definitely a lot easier to deal with if it's warm and a little bit pliable. But don't go the extra step and use a torch to heat this stuff up so that you can slide these in. I heard a guy just recently said, oh man, I use a, a torch and these things just go in like butter. Now, I'm no chemist, but generally when you use extreme heat to soften up materials, it can change the molecular structure and affect its ability to contract and expand. So we want this with all of the properties that came with it. So I would definitely recommend against using a torch. If that's what you do and that, and that works out for you, then hey, go for what you know. But if you're coming to me for advice, I'll tell you not to do it. It's a lot easier to put these things in with a rubber mallet. I mean, it, you could probably work it back and forth with your hand, but it's just as easy to take a rubber mallet and pop it in. Now, obviously, you're going to want to put your clamp on first before you go putting the fittings together. I mean, as we're sitting here just demonstrating it for the camera, I've just got an open-ended stick. But you want to take and put your clamp on first, slide it a little ways down, put your fitting in. We'll go ahead and tap this one in here. And I'm using one of the old style clamps. This is called a worm drive clamp, and it has a little um, screw with a gear on it that closes this up. So we'll want to use a socket wrench or a nut driver to close this up here. And basically what we're looking to do is seal this up to 30 to 60 foot pounds of torque or just enough to seal it up. Remember that you're working with plastic here and don't get like the Incredible Hulk and think, man, I'm going to just, you know, grind this down until there's no water can escape. Well, you're going to end up cracking the plastic fittings if you do that. So these are the old style and a lot of people still use these, but it's a lot easier to use clamp on style fittings. So let's take a look at putting together a fitting using a pinch clamp. Now I'm going to show you a repair here just on the tabletop just to kind of give you an idea of how you're going to deal with polyethylene. But basically with the pinch clamps, you know, you fit your clamp on first and then let's put this down in here. And it's not seated all the way down in here, but this is just for demonstration purposes here. And basically what you have is a just a pinch clamp and a little lip on each side of this fitting that you put this on and then just cramp it down with your hand strength 
and boom, you've got a great no leak seal on here and you don't have to worry about cracking these fittings. These pinch clamps are only going to go so far in. So even if you are the Incredible Hulk and you think you're just going to, you know, pinch this thing down, it's not really going to let you put enough force on it to break this. I mean, hey, maybe you're a big strong guy and you can, but for the most part, if you're using common sense when you put this together, you're going to end up with a, a leak-free seal. One thing that I've seen done in the field that I would recommend against is putting WD-40 or Vaseline or any type of grease on these fittings to help them slide in there better. It's better just to use a rubber mallet. And I mean, honestly, if you know, you're know you so lazy that you can't pop this thing in here with a couple of hits, then I don't know what to say about you. But just think about this with the WD-40 or Vaseline. This is eventually going to end up on your landscape. Because water is passing through here and you're either going to bury this in the ground and those chemicals with it or it's going to be on the inside of the pipe and getting sprayed out onto your plants, your um, your ornamentals, your flowers, your grass. So that's not a great thing. So I would recommend against doing that as well as using a torch. Let's talk about the flow rates. With the half inch, you're going to be able to get four gallons per minute through that pipe. So it really is only good to supply one, possibly two heads, depending on how much flow is going through those heads. I've seen people construct entire systems out of the half inch polyethylene. Now that's a huge mistake and anybody that's ever seen it done knows what's going to happen when that system is turned on. I was driving down the road maybe a couple of years ago and I passed by a house and I saw a couple of landscapers and they were using a bed edger that has a little blade on it to cut little small trenches and they were constructing an entire system out of half inch polyethylene. So if this pipe can only carry four gallons per minute and you're trying to put six heads on it, what happens when you turn the system on? None of those heads are probably even going to pop out of the ground. And if they do, they'll probably just have a little stream of water that barely even shoots out more than a couple inches away from the head, if the head even pops up at all. So I know what would happen when they turn it on. They'd probably say, oh, we don't have enough pressure. But the truth is, is you don't have enough water to be able to flow through the pipes to get out to all the heads. So that's a problem. So the half inch only gets four gallons per minute. Three quarter inch piece of polyethylene pipe will flow up to eight gallons per minute and a one inch piece of pipe will flow 12 gallons per minute. Now if you compare that to a piece of PVC, say a class 200 piece of PVC that'll flow 16 gallons per minute, you'll see that this may not always be the most economical solution, but depending on the climate, it may be the only solution that you want to use.